Could an oil price spike lead to a global recession? Let's have a look. Hello everyone, I'm Florian Heiser and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I'm still working through my Stein of coffee when I thought we'd have a look at this article. It's an analysis about oil price spikes. Could it lead to a global recession? Now, before we get into this, I want to talk about just an interesting thing. Traditionally, the Middle East has always been the largest producer of crude petroleum. 14%, you've got Iraq as well, United Arab Emirates. But now you've got the United States as a larger supplier, 2.4%, and Canada at 6.8%. My understanding is that this data is a couple of years old. The US is even higher, and so is Canada. A lot of that is to do with fracking and technological advancements allowing access to oil that would previously have been deemed commercially not viable. So we've seen oil prices go up in the last few days. We'll have a look here at trading economics. What's oil now? Brent is up to 64. Crude oil is at 59 US dollars. Now, could this be that that spike hasn't hasn't been that dramatic? It hasn't been that dramatic. We'll have a look here at the chart. You can see here over the, the historical changes. I mean, look at the 70s crisis. Boom. Just before, you know, boom. Boom. Here. Beep. Not as much. Same thing with crude. Now, could this be, we're at a point now where America, Canada, Northern America, are not as dependent on Saudi Arabian oil as they once were? due to technological advances. What do you think, guys? Let me know in the comments. So let's read through this article. Oil price spike piles yet another risk onto fragile global economy. For years, central banks across the developed economies have fought with just about every weapon in their arsenal, and even some they didn't previously know they had, well, yes, to try and boost inflation. Over the past three decades, it has become conventional wisdom that there is a healthy level of consumer price increases inflation comparable with the sustainable speed of economic growth. Really? Well, if price rises faster than this healthy level, which is widely assumed to be somewhere between 1% to 3% in the advanced economies, then it is a sign that the economy is growing faster than its capacity constraints, like the availability of workers or materials, and needs to slow down. That is when central banks will typically raise interest rates to cool things down. If interest rates are higher, there's generally less borrowing and spending and more saving. I mean, the thing is, my criticism of the whole inflation methodology they use is, why don't they account for housing? Why don't they actually include the cost of buying housing? I don't know, why, why not? Hmm? I wonder what Australia's inflation rate would look then. Maybe that's a bit of Excel playing that I have to look at. If price rises are below the target, it is seen as a signal the economy isn't using all the resources available to it and could grow more quickly, so central banks will cut rates. The problem is, price rises have been low in many advanced economies, most notably Europe and Japan for years, or even in Japan's case decades, without low, zero, or even negative interest rates doing much to boost them. Well, it shows you, is or are negative interest rates even going to be a benefit. So oil supply disruption, worst in history. Okay, worst in history. And I'll, you know, let's bring, jump back here. Look, look here. Look at that price rise. Look at the last 10 years. Look at that rise. Go to max data. Look at the other disasters. I've got a little one-year-old crawling around. If you hear pieces of metal dropping, I'm sure it's safe. Probably a screwdriver or something. <laughs> so but this could be about to change and is not and not in a good way. One moment. What have you got there? Oh yeah, just a bolt. That's a, I guess it's a baby's toy and it makes a nice noise like a rat. The aerial attacks on key Saudi oil facilities have temporarily knocked out about 6% of global crude supply. The damage is going to take weeks to fully repair. There is a risk of further attacks and analy analysts say there is only a limited extent to which global stockpiles or increased production elsewhere can offset the shortfalls. OPEC's spare capacity of around 4 million barrels per day is reasonable, 
but less than the outage from Saudi Arabia, and there are ongoing issues in terms of supply from Venezuela and Libya, AMP chiefs, chief economist Shane Oliver noted. Oil markets reacted strongly to the disruption, with prices jumping about 20% from US 60 to nearly US 72 a barrel when they had their first chance of response on Monday. Yes, and well, right now, Brent is at $64 and crude is at $59. They have come back quite a bit since then to US $64 a barrel. Okay, well, yep. Uh, on news that most of the disrupted oil production will be back online within two to three weeks. However, most analysts expect prices to remain above previously previous lows on increased worries about further attacks. While Monday's 20% surge may sound like a big jump in prices, Dr. Oliver said it was a pretty subdued response to by historical standards. Yes, it really is. The 5.7 million barrels per day disruption makes it the worst in history, worse than the Iranian revolution, 5.6, sorry, 5.7 million barrels, Iran, Iran was 5.6, that saw a roughly threefold increase in oil prices and the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait, 4.3, that saw oil prices briefly double, he wrote. So a further spike in prices is likely if the threat continues to escalate. The threat isn't going away, with discussions of war still live in Washington. Economic fallout from oil price shock. So there's a pretty high chance oil prices will rise further from here, not slip back to recent lows. What effect would that have on already struggling global economies? Past oil price surges have clearly played a role in US and global turnaround, downturns. In the mid 1970s, the early 80s, the early 90s, early 2000, and even prior to the GFC, Dr. Oliver said. So we can see here, crude oil price, US GDP. Well, there you go. You reckon that's correlation there? He added it generally took a doubling in oil prices over 12 months to have those recessionary effects, which would require Brent crude hitting US 120 a barrel and we haven't been close to those levels for five years. But research from Citigroup's economist team suggests even a US $10 a barrel increase in prices, which was briefly exceeded on Monday morning, would, would cause a slight slowdown in global economic growth and a meaningful jump in inflation. Economic modeling suggests, should, suggests even such a modest price increase, if sustained, may take about 0.1% points, percentage points off global growth and add 0.9 percentage points to inflation. Well, isn't that what the central banks want? <laughs> oh no, sorry, it's a central banker's nightmare. Most of them would normally welcome the inflation increase with glee, but this would be one d driven by a negative supply shock and a demand pull. Yes, well, there you go. It's like the broken window fallacy, isn't it? A demand pull happens when the economy is growing faster than its capacity in workers and resources, and it should be able to cope with higher interest rates to take a little heat out. A central banker's problem with negative supply shock is an important in an important commodity such as oil is that they can catapult inflation well above the bank's target, but at the same time, lower economic growth. Oh, well, there you go. Oil price rises are particularly insidious as they infect the economy both directly and indirectly. For a start, households pay more for petrol, leaving them with less to spend. Dr. Oliver said a doubling of crude oil prices from uh, recent lows would take Australian petrol prices from $1.40 a litre to $1.95, pushing the average family's fuel bill up by $19 a week. Well, I've got a solution to that. Just remove the, the taxes and tariffs and oh, bloody excises and rubbish we have on petrol. Or reduce that to ensure that it's at a, a reasonable level. You know, if the government's making so much money off it, but the effect of higher fuel prices reverberates throughout the economy. Transportation costs rise, increasing the input costs of many businesses, forcing those that can, uh, that can to raise their prices and those that can't to cut other costs like wages or investment or accept lower profits or maybe run at a loss. Stagflation risk from oil. If fuel costs rise enough, the economy could find itself in a state of stagflation where the economy is stalling or in recession but inflation is helping. This is what happened in the 1970s when the cartel of oil producing nations, OPEC, cut production to boost prices. It leaves central banks with inflation above their target levels, but economies that need more stimulus, not less.
The inflation target is screaming for them to raise rates, but the economy is crying out for further cuts. The Bank of France governor, Francois Villeroy de Gaulle, de Gaulle is not yet alarmed, but he is already he's alert to the risk. It is too early to rush to hasty conclusions, but we should continually monitor the consequence of the oil market, which is characteristic, characterized by a rather flexible supply and subdued demand, he said in a London speech. If it lasts, the latest oil shock could increase inflation and hamper growth. Dr. Oliver doesn't think it'll be a problem this time around. While higher oil prices boost inflation, central banks will ultimately look through, through this as it's seen as a one-off and ultimately less consumer spending power weighs on underlying or core, i.e. excluding energy and food prices inflation, he argues. So a spike in the oil prices is unlikely to stop further central bank easing as we saw in the early 90s and 2000s and through the GFC. But even if the reserve bank looks past the temporary spike in inflation, the last thing it needs right now is another weight on an economy in which consumers aren't spending, businesses aren't investing, and the only population increase, only population increase is keeping the economy going. Both locally and globally, a genuine oil price spike could be the final straw that breaks the back of a post-global financial crisis expansion looking very long in the tooth. And if oil prices do not end up sinking the global economy, um, Mr. Villeroy warned that over the long term, climate change... Oh, come on! He warned it could create upward price pressures and a slowdown in activity, which uh, risks generating a long-term stagflation shock. Well, actually, actually, he's right. He is 100% right. We're seeing this here in Australia. We're seeing the effect on our energy prices due to government-mandated sustainability requirements with regards to energy production. So climate change, I would argue the cult of climate change forcing radical interventions into our economies is going to have long-term consequences. It'll drive us to recession. That's what I think. I, you know, so you got to watch these people. These protesters are dangerous. Remember kids, socialism kills. Thanks for watching everyone. Like, share, and subscribe. Let me know what you think. Take care and I'll see you next time.